here we go. Scott Sanderson. So with five B2B startups under his belt, Scott is an experienced tech entrepreneur and presently the co-founder, as Kathleen uh, mentioned, currently co-founder of Shop to It Incorporated. Uh, from the whiteboard to the exit for the past 19 years, Scott has been an integral part at each stage of founding, funding, growing and exiting and helping software as a service companies grow from napkins to boardrooms. And I, I that wasn't my verbiage, but I love it. Napkins to boardrooms. Um, <laughs> an entrepreneur of 24 years, Scott has been active and is well known in the Calgary entrepreneurial community. Having mentored many early founders, Scott has also served on the board of directors and set as the president of and um, EO, formerly YEO, Young Entrepreneurs Organization. So as co-founder of Shop To It, Scott is responsible for aspects of operations. Shop To It is a cloud-based automated software as a service platform that makes it fast, easy, and affordable for any small businesses to create a perpetual stream of new customers from Google. So a uh, big round of applause on a Friday. Scott, the floor is yours. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, guys. Um, now, I had it arranged with Colleen that she was going to share the slide deck. Are you doing that, Brett? Or Oh, here we go. I got to check my one moment. Give me one second here. So slide while you're deck. doing that, I'll just add yeah. a little bit to why maybe I get the opportunity to talk to you guys. Like I owned an agency in Calgary and in Vancouver, Canada, Western Canada for about 21 years called ClickSpace Interactive, which is still in existence. And I sold it a number of years ago. And where shop to it kind of came out of was we always had to say no to small guys. We lost money every time we touched a small account. And if they weren't like, we couldn't make you know, between this is older days, there was less software floating around. It was all labor, people doing the work. And if we couldn't make at least $500 a month in profit off of a business, we just couldn't work with them. And we turned them away. And we were a small business ourselves. And it was a little bit hard. And I was always involved in the entrepreneurial community in, in Alberta and in Canada. And it was always kind of like the people you want to help the most, you can't because you can't make money doing it. And we got approached by Google uh, a number of years ago to try and build in an API directly into their ad engine to try and make it so that there didn't have to be a lot of labor or consulting fees to run even a very small ad campaign. And that's what we do. So at shop to it, we start ad campaigns for you guys at $99 US wholesale. If you want to just go to slide three. Absolutely. One moment here. Just getting rid of some stuff. All your dating apps. Oh my gosh. There we go. Am I, do I have the right view here, Scott? Yeah, that's fine. You can just move it to uh, slide three, the next one. We'll slide the, three. Okay. Yeah. So that's two, there's three. So Boom. what can you expect from us? So the average ad campaign that we run through Vendasta uh, we give them, uh, the, the, they end up spending about $360 a month with us. But again, it starts at $99 a month. It's super easy to turn on. You don't actually, like, we don't ask you for keywords. You don't have to think about keywords. You don't have to think about negatives. You don't have to do any of that work. The ads are all dynamically generated and they connect directly in with, with uh, uh, Google's interface. And then we report daily on what's going on with your campaign. But this is just an average of what's going on. The typical campaign, uh, as I mentioned, $3 US, there's 905 keyword combinations in the typical ad campaign. And that's the real trick is it's long tail keywords. So don't spend $5 on head words, spend what we're doing, which is $1.18 on long tail words. Oftentimes they're better uh, in terms of where the customer is in their buying journey. Uh, and for sure, if you can give a small business five visits for the same price as one visit, you're going to have a better relationship with them and get a higher return on ad spend. So that's why we did this. I mean, there's case studies that we provide in the Vendasta marketplace. There's all kinds of information in there. But the whole point is, how do you give high yield results to the small business on a small budget and make it so you guys can make money? Because the average cost per click in Google globally today is about two dollars and seventy six cents. It's very easy for you, and they're and they're not that good because they may be headwords. So this is very easy for you to mark up and add money. Okay, let's go to the next one, Brett. So just quickly, we're just going to talk a little bit about bundles today. 
Uh, we're going to talk about the key benefits of bundling, choosing the bundles. There's some information I'm going to share with you that's brand new from, from Vendasta, and then open up to discussion. So I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to get you started and answer any questions. We can go to the next one. So, you know, the benefits of the alternative approach of leading with traffic is what I call it, or, or front or backloading instead of front loading, which we'll talk about in another session if you guys get Colleen and Brett to, to do that, is that when you bundle and start small with a business, what we call a land and expand strategy, you will win more deals. They get what they want. A small business, when you turn on an ad campaign inside of a bundle, even at $100, they get traffic in two to four days. Like they're not sitting around waiting for things to happen. And that really has a big impact in how you would position it, how you would sell it and how you maintain it and keep it. You set them up at the beginning and tell them you're gonna start them small, use their own actual results, combination of SEO, GMB and search engine uh, advertising to say, you, I am delivering traffic to you at an average cost of $3 a visit right, we can increase that amount and, and let's move from there in terms of increasing budget or even increasing tactics. So when you, when you see the, the, the bundles that Vendasta has put together for you, you'll understand this. But I really do think that that is a great win-win because the consumer gets what they want. And when you're dealing with small businesses today, particularly after the pandemic, what they want is to survive and they don't know how to do this, right? They don't know how to get visitors from their phones into their businesses. But we do. And, you know, with us providing tools to help you uh, earn and gain their trust, there's a way to do it at scale so you can broaden up your business and, and not have to do proposals and quotes and whatnot. Just, hey, A, B or C, let's get started. Next. So in my opinion, the first benefit is really that closing more deals. I mean, we all know what it's like to you know do a quote you know, go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, do a bunch of research. This is time and time to you, as I believe it is money. It's profit. That's where your profit lies is in your time. So the more you can do to streamline the approach for certain customers, the better off you're going to be. So this whole idea is you don't have to say no when they're under a thousand dollars a month. You can say yes, but it could be self-serve. We have these. This is how we do it. We start you, we grow you, and then we expand from there. I don't wanna hear from you for 90 days, Mr. Customer. You can log in and we've white labeled our back end. Of course, we're in the executive report as well. You can log in anytime you want, Mr. Customer, and take a look and see what's going on. You don't need to call me, right? This, what you're buying is self-serve that curated, and we're gonna come back after 90 days, perhaps, this being, we being you, the reseller, and say, let's review your 90 days results here overall, not what did you get from ads and what did you get from GMB and what did you get from listings? They don't care. What did I get? What did I pay for? Am I going to continue to go forward? Should I increase the budget? But the point is, you don't even like, you can close on a sit. You, someone calls in as a leader, fills in a form, you have an online appointment. You say, why don't we just do this? Why don't we focus on getting you traffic? and then talk about your overall web strategy. And oftentimes when you do that, you can close a deal like right in the spot, you know, make it so that the bundles are ABC, which you'll see in a minute, uh, make it so that the price points of those bundles are something that they feel like they can afford, that the risk is not high and off you go. So I think when you combine the ad campaign and, and uh, the SEO tools and alerts and whatnot together, they get very, very comfortable and they have a lot of trust. The Vendasta platform will alert them when they get a mention in social media if you have that turned on. It will alert them when you have a review that they need to respond to if you have reputation management turned on, which we encourage you to do, right? And then the ads just drive traffic. So next, I think that there's that's the first benefit is just closing deals and closing them quick. Like if you have salespeople in your organization, don't teach them everything, teach them this. Bundle A, B, or C, teach them this strategy and watch them come back with orders. If you need a salesperson at all, oftentimes you could do it in a video. We've seen it uh, with some of our partners. I think the second thing is that you become a trusted supplier to them or partner. And that means when the upgrade time happens, you're going to be able to do it at a higher margin. 
So right now, you know, when you front load, which usually is starting with content or a website redesign and that kind of uh, stuff, I really do find that to be very competitive. There's an awful lot of website building tools, competitors. Everyone's got some nephew that sits in a garage that'll build a website for somebody for, you know, 1500 bucks. It's a race to the bottom. But think, why does a small business want a website at all? Right? Because they want customers, right? They want to stay in business. And, and oftentimes, if you start with that Latin span strategy, you're going to be the natural person. Hey, I'm delivering quality traffic to you in the tune of 500 visits a month at $3 a bit or whatever the numbers are, right? We now need to talk about conversion. And maybe we start with some content or maybe we start with better conversion landing pages or maybe we have to blow up the whole website because it's crappy, right? When you get to that conversation and you are the person providing traffic to them, you're very rarely shocked at all. You're, you are the trusted advisor. You know, they say, Tim, tell me what I should be doing. I trust what you, you've demonstrated to me that I can trust you. Let's go. And there's no one else in that conversation, which means you can do it at a, at a margin that can help your business grow instead of tanking margins all the time just to try and maintain customers. And I hated that. It was like every car, why are you 10 grand when this guy's three grand? I don't know, go to the three grand guy and leave me alone then. And you know, that's just, we can build a really strong base if we have a bunch of customers that we're not spending a bunch of money on and that we're making our time, which is money to me, and that we're maintaining our margins on the work that we do. So I think the little to no competition, higher margins because of the trusted position that you're in is the real second reason why you would consider this bundling and land and expand strategy. And then the third one, you can change it back. When you start to bundle things together, you reduce churn. It's just that simple. Every piece of literature that you're ever going to read about this will tell you this. But you reduce churn in this particular case because they have outsourced the survival of their business digitally to you. They don't know which module, which tool, which thing is really working better or worse or harder or faster or more or less expensive. All they know is that they had you know, a phone ring or a door swing based on the money that they gave you. So I find that when that is the case, it's, it's easy to say, well, let's run an ad campaign, see what happens, and then turn the ad campaign off because you're not sure what happened because when are you ever sure what the results are for an ad campaign? Good but question if you have you. it in a bundle and a set and forget, then um, you're going to keep them longer. Yeah, go ahead, bro. So from Kathy Paterni, um, is there, so is there more value in launching a self-serve digital ads campaign before their GMB and listing data and website SEO is fixed? Um, and isn't that counterintuitive? Well, I, I, I mean, fixed, what is fixed? If they have a listing in Google, they have the ability to get traffic in my opinion, right? If they have a website that has a form fill or a phone number on it, they have the, you have the ability to demonstrate that there is traffic when you, you start to talk, in my opinion, Kathy, about and this is just my opinion, right? Like, I don't know everything. But in my opinion, if you start to talk to me about traffic, 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 and how much traffic you are delivering or driving, the ability to upgrade that website or increase the margins on the work that you do there is higher. So I think when, and for them, you know, when we, when we hear, and in some cases, even with resellers, talk to some small businesses, you know, what we hear is I need results right now. Like, get it started and that's just what ads can do is it's right now and so i think it just depends on the situation you guys know how to read the situations but i think that you know waiting to get everything done and then turning on ads is delaying things to a lot of people by you know a month or more and they need help today they need to sell more pizzas right now and so i believe that yeah ads even before you have a solid foundation makes sense because you're going to be able to upsell conversion tools and factors a lot easier if you have traffic. So those are the three main reasons. Um, so I think if you can switch it, right, we're, and we're literally three slides away. Um, I really think, you know, make sure that you make it self-serve and easy for them. And that means get a public storefront somewhere, drive them to it. Hey, Mr. Customer, it's ABC, pick your bundle, let's go. I really believe it's important. And I really think that there's, you know, talk to your to your reps or if you haven't used them there's direct buy widgets for bundling there is uh, the ability to 
uh, see the results in real time. Like you can turn on something with an ad campaign, it's live in four days, there's traffic on that fourth day. Um, and you can let that customer self-serve. Do you wanna to go to the next slide? So we spent a bunch of time um, being able to white label our back end for you. So you can upload your logos uh, into our back end. When you're in Business Center and you click on the Google Ads product, you can direct your customer directly into our reporting dashboard. Our reports update every day. So executive report updates every seven days. So you can, again, just tell that customer, hey, go use it yourself. If you wanna to go to slide uh, 12, Brett. Um, and in there, it will show them a bunch more data. And all you're doing is trying to say, I don't want to talk to you about what's going on. If you're really that kind of see more customers, you know, we all have those. They always want to see more. Go self-serve. You don't need to phone me to do this. We're going to have a scheduled appointment in 90 days. But you can now with confidence know that as a reseller, it's going to show the actual cost per click to you. Um, but as a end user, it's only going to show the impressions and the clicks, not the cost per click. But we've also just recently built a feature in where you can put in your margin on the clicks and it will then adjust it so that the reports actually show the cost per click with your, your margin built in. So we're learning uh, as we work with you guys what it is that you, that you need and want. Last thing on sl next slide, or 13, if you don't mind, Brett. The last thing I wanted to show you is that we've also added what's called an impression share calculator inside of uh, our back end. Uh, the next slide. And the impression share is something that we can talk about quite a bit, but it's basically saying if there's 100 searches for this campaign based on the budget, how many times out of the 100 is your customer eligible to go and, and be shown and get a click? And that's a natural upgrade path from ads. You're going to find that most of these micro campaigns are under 5% impression share, and you can even show them how to go see that themselves and, and, and uh, self-serve. Okay, out of the good stuff. So if you can go two slides, Brett. That's the impression share, but I can show you that later. Now, choosing bundles. This is kind of neat. So right now in your marketplace, you can go to the next one. Um, there's been a change. So if you go into marketplace packages on the tabs on the left, you're going to see that there's two tabs. Uh, and One's called store and the other's called recommended packages. And if you click the recommended packages as of, I think, like yesterday, you're going to find a new set of bundles. You can go to the next one, Brett. Uh, nice, clean, small, ready for you to actually just turn on and make live. I would encourage you to go in there and look at them because they. this is the Vendasta team and, and Craig Taylor primarily and Colleen going through saying, how do we get rid of 100 bundles and make it complicated and just make it five, six bundles and make it slick? So this, and it's a one-to-many strategy. It's basically saying, start emailing your customers, drop them into your public store, bundle A, B, C, and just get orders. Um, in these bundles, uh, next slide, you're gonna find that starting at Ignition and whatnot, the Google ads are, are just built in. So they're defaulted into there and off they go. And literally, if you guys haven't worked with us yet, the reason you see 139 for the ads, it's 99 is because that's, showing in Canada, US dollars being converted. So <laughs> it's $99 US um, for the, to start a Google Ads campaign. And it takes you no time, like literally tell us the target area, right? Show us where you want the traffic to go. We're good. And then you can go back in and adjust things. And Christina, who manages support for all of the Vendasta resellers, will tell you that and help you with that if you choose to. But the idea is, can you do this at scale and be profitable? That's the whole plan here. So literally, last slide, that's my whole thing. That's me talking fast, trying not to give you a product dump and trying to get you stimulated to think about, keep hunting whales, keep fishing for the big fish, but it's so much easier on every Friday afternoon when we fear the phone ring at four o'clock, if you've got 50 or 100 small fish paying you some margin every month as well. And if you can build your practice and combine both of those things, you're going to have a much more solid business, in my opinion. So that's the whole thing. Now it's Q and A part, and Brilliant. you can get rid of the uh, presentation if you want. Absolutely, stop. All right, now business.
principle that you just said, uh, getting the wells, but then diversifying that uh, portfolio up a little bit. Um, that's wisdom. Like, don't you hate it? Don't you hate Fridays? <laughs> I love every day of my life. Um, I will talk to you on Fridays to help you brighten up yours a little bit. If you want. <laughs> well, no, when I, when I owned an agency, it was kind of like, you know, there were two customers and if they phoned me on Friday at four o'clock, I was like, Oh, I was phoning all my staff going, does anybody know anything before I phone this guy back? <laughs> oh, I gotcha. I, I like what this is because usually the biggest barrier of entry for ads is the cost to get them to work. Right. And then to deal with all the confusion around how to set up the ads, like you said, the negative keywords and the actual design of it. And this is a huge, huge win for small businesses, actually, and for anyone that wants to deal with small businesses. Right. And I think that it's not counterintuitive. It's not something we need to learn. It makes sense that you set up your Google page, you get the reputation, a couple of these other tools, and you just start landing ads on their website. They should have traffic in 10 days. And you know what? Every business needs to launch that way. And the only reason why I've always discouraged the launch of the ads for at least 30 days is at least let me show you I can get something going on your listings. But you've given the ability to say, let me show you I can get something going on your ads and we can get you some results in five to 10 days. That's a really huge proposition to get them going. Yeah, my, my personal opinion, Daniel, is that they don't care how you do it. <laughs> what That's they care true. is, does it work? What does yeah. it cost, right? right? That's it, it's very simple for them, right? Small businesses today are training staff, trying to hire people that they can't find, trying to stay, trying to figure out what incentives there are from the government. They're trying to figure out where they should have a storefront anymore, or do everything online. Like they're messed. Yeah. Right? Exactly. All they care about is you're feeding me business. I don't care how you do it. Do it in social, do it in listings, do it however. All that I'm suggesting is that if you add an ad campaign to that story, you're going to do it faster. Oh, absolutely. Because okay. usually the biggest question is how soon am I going to see a return on this? And when you're dealing with listings or SEO, it's like 90 to 120 days to six months, maybe even a year. Yeah. But with ads, it's like you get that immediate, but you're going to usually spend a little bit more. But this gives them the ability to actually get that immediate with not having to spend a little more because you usually have to pay for all that expertise in the yeah. setup of the campaign. So this is what makes this so brilliant. Absolutely. Um, we have another question. So really quick, Scott, after, I mean, after the session, reach out to uh, Thomas Muller. He, he had some questions, but his battery's running out. He left his email there for you though. Okay. But, uh, Ryan, Ryan uh, he had a question. Um, is this all, you might have to reference back to the specific point in the presentation, Ryan, but is this all AI and done automatically based on trends? If I have a car dealer who wants to run ads, um, Camry is a hot search trend, but they haven't had one in months. Advertising for that is mute. So is there any control over that? If there is no human support, how does that work? So there is human support. Uh, our model, so we will support you guys to the nth degree. So you have questions, you need. To, so we build a platform that says, hey, look, bam, you're live. Look, bam, it's getting traffic. But you can go in there and tweak all kinds of stuff if you want to, and we teach you how to do that. I want, the, the AI can't figure out who the business's competitors are really. So I can't buy competitive name keywords. And sometimes, particularly in car dealership world, that can be very effective. Somebody who's searching for X shovels is actually looking for a car and that's a lead. So there is the ability to go back in there and tweak any and all elements of those campaigns. And there's gonna be some changes in there shortly. But the net net is you can get that up and live and running and just not even have to talk to your customer. Let's start to get you traffic and then let's improve on it. That would be my opinion, Ryan. So you have, you can do it either way. You can do both, but certainly the AI will continue to create the dynamic ads and continue to create the bid. Now that's one of the first platform. questions I'm asked when we talk about this is what area are you going to run them in and what words are you going to target? How are you going yeah. to come up with those words? Yeah. So the area, you have to tell us the area on the order form. This is the target area. This is the website. We would then crawl that website, extract the keywords from the website and build the long tail campaigns, which we show you. You can see and go back in the back end and see them all. But you can add or modify whatever you want once it's in there. Does that make sense? And I'm happy to talk to you offline, Ryan. Like I know we've talked to before and you know, at some point it's going to be just take the leap, go pick one of the bundles, do one and let us prove it to you. 
Well, I did, and I went with the digital ads campaign. So that's kind of why I'm following back to this question oh. of, you know, did I make a you mistake with that? somebody else? You, we talked about this, man. <laughs> yeah, no, no. And, and, and I think if you're looking for that kind of like the only difference is even with Shakia's group and the digital ads group, the only difference is like ours is bam, live results, cheap. Well, right? I'd like. I'd like to learn more off, off offline so we don't tie up the group's time because I have sure. a few other campaigns in the works. And if I made a mistake with one, that's fine. I'd like to get the others on board, but. Uh, and I yeah. don't think we, I don't think there's a mistake, right? I think it's just trying to figure out which use case should have which product. Okay. Right. Fair if you're, if there's yeah. more consulting, like a car dealer, typically there's a big budget that's available to you in that. And so starting off with, you know, more consulting can sometimes be useful because you can go and dazzle that car manager with all this useless information that seems like, you know, you're really doing a bunch of extra work for them. And that can be good. And sometimes that information can be really useful and they want to be a part of it. It's a highly competitive space. Absolutely. Uh, Jason, you have a question there? Or is there a oh yeah. Uh, so I understood probably about a third of what you said, which is, which is good for me. Uh, that's a good percentage. Uh, I, I have a client that, um, for example, he's a does crawl space encapsulation. You know, they come in your in your house and whatever. And he's we do SEO. We're doing good jobs with listings, SEO, a bunch of stuff and everything. And he said to me, "Hey, this is our slow time of year. I'd like to do some advertising. I'd like to put in some ads. Yeah, not not a big budget, maybe a few hundred dollars, whatever." My biggest obstacle with most investor partners, vendor partners, is. They give a great presentation. They say, hey, here's our screenshots and all of our stuff and everything. And really what it would just take is somebody just saying to me, you know, on a 20 minute call, looking at the at the client with me and saying, okay, this is how it would work, A, B, C, D. My comfort level would rock it up. I would feel much more secure telling the client about that because I don't know how many other people have had this experience. You're trying to put forward a new a new service through the portal and the client says, okay, well, I know in the, in the chat, somebody just said, could I target this by county, which is a good question, whatever. But there's nothing worse than if a client says that to me and I go, well, shit, if I know, I'm just a guy with a white label company. I, I don't know my ass from a hole in a tree. So, so is there is there a over and above your presentation, is there a time or a person or a staff that can say to me, okay, dummy, sh share your screen, show me the account, I'll tell you what to do, and, and at least for the first one to hold my hand so that I don't look like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm farting in church. Yeah, so for sure, I mean, Christina will help you, but the idea here, Jason, is what you do is you fill in a form, right, and at, you set the budget. Then you come into our back end and say, here's the target area I want. County, FSA, which is a zip code sortation area, you know, radius, you know, state, nation, whatever you want. You set that and you can change it whenever you want. Right. And that and you're done. Like that is the you have started an ad campaign. And what is the what is the difference? Uh, it's like the White House. I have a follow up. So what what is the difference between this? I know it's a loaded question, but between this, your your platform and and the Google ads for small business that is currently in the, the portal or ad bot or whatever, it sounds to me great. I mean, it's uh, what you're describing is my client says I got 500 bucks. I go and fill out the order form. I pick the county and boom, I that, that have a nice day. But I think the difference between us is we're focused on how we preserve the ability for you to make money and save time. Right. And how do you deliver the absolute highest return on ad spend as you possibly can? So I think we're we're quite focused on that. I mean, I've worked with other products, other agencies, other tools. You know, they just don't do that. Like if you go to the Google ads robot, you know, it's like you tell me the keywords. So well, that's work and that's I margin. OK, right? so, so the only in that case, the only leftover question I have is you you uh, you had that screen there, that slide where you showed customer voice or reputation or social media, et cetera. Yeah. And, and that's where you lost me a little bit about how I understand ads. I understand clicks, calls, ROI, blah, blah, blah. Right. How does that spill over into those other areas? I didn't really get that. Okay. So basically what's happened is Vendasta realizing that the effectiveness of bundling is really compelling and powerful. They have created curated packages with the shop to it products in them to say, start here. 
here's what we think you should sell as a package. You can adjust them and modify them to suit your needs. But if you remember in the recommended packages before, there was like 700 of them. They all started at $1,000. And it was like more complicated than being in the marketplace. And they've now streamlined it to five and said here, Jason, this is already thought of. The upgrade path is pre-curated. This is Craig Taylor. Like if you want to thank somebody, thank him, right? And saying, this is where we should start people like yourself. Just get started. It's one form, off you go, here's the price, put your margin in there and start to deliver results and circle back with that customer. So the whole point here is we're very, very focused on helping you guys be profitable, right? Like it's time is the killer. Time is the reason you say no. Time is the reason that you have higher margins on things and they say no. Right. And right now it's kind of, they don't know what to do. They need a trusted source. Um, be that, but don't spend a bunch of time on a low margin account, set that expectation in the sales call. All right. Great information. I like that I, a lot. I, I, yeah. I'll, I'll touch back on your, with your team, et cetera, but might be a good, this account might be a good place to start off with a with like right. a sample. Like we have, we have resellers that are running over 20 accounts with us. Like their sales reps just say, and we, you know, we took the time manually to, to bundle them. And the sales rep goes into the call or is on the call or on the video and says, A, B or C. <laughs> right. And then well, sends like them a direct link to say, get your credit card out and sign up, but don't call me again unless you have like a clarifying question. Because I'm busy too. And now you can go to your salespeople and say, how many of those meetings have you got? And turn your focus into how do you create leads from your, like what you provide as services, social media, perhaps, um, or, or however you're doing that, networking and whatnot, and get those leads to convert to sales without, you know, when you spend three hours to write up a quote, right? And if you're not valuing those three hours, you're losing money. Very good point. That's what I felt coming out of, out of ClickSpace was it's just, it was like, well, great. I, I, reps will come back with leads and we'll spend all kinds of time in the office or whatnot, writing up proposals. Proposals don't sell like tactics, in my opinion. There's a time for proposals, but man, if you can get their trust and if you can get them started, right, which I think are tactics um, and have a, a, a platform and foundation to do that, you're just going to have way more quality higher margin opportunities going forward. Yep, absolutely. We have uh, we have six more questions here, so I may even just kind of do a, <laughs> a, 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 a speed round, a speed round, just to make sure- Oh, you're trying we, to we say, Scott, could response. you shorten your answers? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you. was that political enough? Did I, did I frame that? Uh, right? I, I haven't <laughs> been Saskatoon before, I know how it works. So Tim Glenn, he's, he's asking, how are keywords managed? Well, we extract, so the, the technical, so, what we have built is we suck the keywords in off of a website and then we map them into our database and our database categorizes what this company is. Oh, it's a pizza place. Oh, it's a mortgage broker, right? Our database and says, what have we learned in doing mortgage brokerage campaigns before? So we don't just take what's on the website. We actually suck in what we already know. And then we start campaigns that are specific to product categories based on that learning, these combinations, these negatives. So we're not like, we're not, you know, sitting in the background typing stuff in either. We're learning at scale and applying it to your campaigns automatically. Does that answer that question? But then you can always go in and, and add different things that the software didn't think about. Most people don't, but you can. Awesome. And then we have a question from Raj here. Um, love the pre-built bundles for some smaller bundles uh, that prospects might purchase without needing to talk to someone. Would they have any free trial options? Not with ads. Like I'm taking your money, taking our margin, which is 20%, um, splitting that with Vendasta and then giving the money to Google. So you can't really front load ads, but I don't think you really need to. I mean, you can start them off on the product led growth things if they're not prepared to start an ad campaign and then set that expectation with them. Hey, if you put a hundred dollars into here, maybe market up to $200, I can get you traffic you know, by Friday. 
And if you go this way, I can get you traffic, I think, 60 to 90 days. I like that a lot. And you and position it like that with that customer, they almost always say, I think I'd rather be successful now. Yeah, no kidding. And it, the, the name of the game too is kind of reducing being so credible and having enough information that you can reduce the amount of free trials you're given because that free trials is just, as you said, time is money, right? So just diving right into the, the purchased option is kind of ideal. The other um, little, just a little piece of advice on uh, trial op things for me. Um, I find it more credible when the, pr the things that you sell have a price. I would never reveal trial things until the desperation I can't, I close this person. Here's my hail mary, a three month trial or whatever, and I would do it in the reverse. I wouldn't use trials to get them on because I think it diminishes the value of what you provide. But if they don't buy the value of what you provide, I would hail mary the trial at the end. So I don't normally put trials up uh, on sites when I'm advising people. It's more like, nope, you want to play with me. It's not. It's not expensive. It's not you know prohibitive but there is value here. Absolutely. And next week, um, we, we got on Chris, Chris Croft. He's a renowned negotiations expert. And even George Leaf himself was kind of humming and hawing when he was talking, going, ah, that's a really good way of framing this. So with respect to negotiations and pricing your bundles or products, next week's podcast episode is going to highlight a lot of really interesting factors. We have another question from Paul Ryan. When in the marketplace uh, slash discover products, what should be typed in search to find the packages you showed? Do you, are you Present. in a marketplace, Brett? Are you um, in a center? Am I? Yeah, you're like me. I've got 80 tabs yeah. open. One of them. Yep. <laughs> Guys, this is Renee. I'm, I, hi, I'm, I'm in now. If you go to manage store and then from the manage store tab, you should see um, package. If you do um, packages, actually, I'm sorry, marketplace packages. Then um, on the right hand side, one tab will be store and the other step tab will be recommended packages. That's where they are. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah, there's going to be there's going to be a far more bigger rollout. Like this was just like a precursor to this. It is live. It is in your marketplace today. I just wanted to, to, to weigh in and try and frame, you know, when you're thinking of bundling and even if you stick a hundred dollar ad campaign on there, what it does to your positioning. Absolutely. We have a question from David. Uh, can you restrict the advertising by date part? And so David, if you want to expand on that. We're about to launch a new product called Display Ads. And inside of that, it's a very, very specific uh, product for promoting events and hospitality services. You guys are going to love this. It's really cool. It's really going to be a good one. When we turn that on, there will be day parting uh, turned on in search at the same time. Because Display ads really needs day parting. So we built it all out to do day parting, which we're going to extend into the search campaigns as well. So the answer is no, but by the end of February, yes. There you go. Uh, David, we kind of mentioned that um, the areas to target earlier. Did that answer? Or do you want to expand on this question uh, regarding selecting uh, individual cities or townships? Leave it to you. We can't hear you. Can you but the question, me? yeah, there we go. Yeah, uh, I think it got answered along the way. Thank you. Wonderful. And we're there nice to help that you. David, like Christina will help you. Like it takes one and then you're like, oh, okay, I get it. This is dead simple. And then go do 50 more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Frank, Frank had a, another question here. Um, he says that most of his clients have already claimed their GMV profile. So can we remove that from the packages or is that not how it works? You want to take that or do you want I'm me not to? Sure. Um, I, and I apologies. I'm just, okay. uh, so these packages are like, they're put together and you can go in and modify any of the packages. So you can take the package, copy it, modify it and make it your own. So Frank, in your case, for those types of scenarios, you can just remove that and publish it, it would still look the same. It still says blast off or whatever, and it still has that in there. So it's a starting point. It's a way to say, hey, start, right? But you can easily, I mean, in your storefront, like I'm, I don't use the Vendasta Partner Center, like I'm, I'm, I'm not a reseller, so I don't really know, but 
you can go in there and say, make this product public or make it private. So you can create a widget for the private one if you want and take out the listings thing if you want and then give it to that client. They still self sign up. It still goes into recurring billing. It works just like everything else. Perfect. Um, Frank says, thank you. So uh, David had a question. Um, he's asking, what is the percentage dedicated to ads? 80%. David, if you want to expand, 80%. There we go. Um, so we have a, for, for, for all these accounts, we charge a $15 monthly fee and then 20% of the spend. So if you did $100 ad spend, $67.20 is going to Google directly. When you add, so right now we're going to change it to variable pricing. We just did a beta thing with uh, the Vendasta guys to put variable pricing in there. Because right now you have to do add-ons of $50 increments and it's kind of a pain. So when you, every $50 that you add in, we're only 20%. So $40 is going directly to Google. That makes sense. Okay. Um, where are we at here? What percentage and it's tough and please and if you guys need to add more um context because some of the questions were with respect to certain points in the presentation feel free to hop in as well um but raj was asking how about with the reputation manager or non-ad tools so raj if you want to hop in maybe uh, yeah, yeah sorry that was just actually a follow-up to the question about oh. uh, <laughs> about uh, that I asked earlier about uh, uh, a, a free trial. Totally understand what you're saying about free trial. I'm just looking at some of the lower end packages with what, $150, $200 a month. That's a lot for actually getting on a sales call with somebody, right? You, you almost lose money when you pick up the phone based on the margins you'd make on that. So I was just curious about the non-ad spend type of products like Reputation Manager or something just to get somebody um, in the mix. Yeah, I think there's lots of different, like my personal opinion, Raj, is there's lots of tactical ways to do this, right? I just really believe that those first 90 days of a new client relationship are tenuous. And if you took a look at the time you spent over 90 days, and you took a look at the way that I was project presenting it by adding ads into it and the difference that it would do to churn, because it gives you traffic. I and right away, like right now, right? I think you're going to end up looking at it and saying, is my 90 day time commitment actually lower or, or, or is, it, is it not, right? Am I more profitable or not adopting this approach? And it's like everything, Raj, that's tactical. You know, you got to read the situation, right? And in some situations it's going to be, look, we, if you want that, Mr. Customer, just go to my website, pick one of the bundles and sign yourself up. Like that is, is the sales call. And that sales call might be by email. Your snapshot report makes you problem aware. You now are in a situation where you can tell there is a problem. What you're not is solution aware. Here's my emails that says, here's your three choices of solution. Good, better, best. They're going to pick the middle one. <laughs> and let me build trust with you over time. And then let's talk about really deciding whether or not you should be investing more in digital marketing. We'll use your numbers. Sounds good, Scott. Thank you. Uh, I guarantee you this, sir. Right? Yeah. That's how, how I you do it. How are you doing, Scott? I need a glass of water. You're good for a couple more questions. Oh, you got your coffee there too, or tea? Hey, I'm a Saskatchewan boy. I can go all day. <laughs> there we go. Um, so uh, we have two more that I can see. One's, one's for Vendasta, but um, Rob is asking, do you share the quality score and how it's influencing the campaign on the dashboard? Like low quality score um, is often a good motivator to update websites. Um, we don't, but if you request, so how it works with us is on an MCC, you can only get certain amounts of pieces of data back from that. And we really are, you know, learning, is that something you guys want in there? Do you want us to start to pull it through the API and stick it on the dashboard right now, Rob, we don't show them, but you can, you know, ask us, but I think the snapshot report, just rerun the snapshot report, move all the things that you've already done with them and show them the website part. It'll show them essentially their quality score, right? Because basically your quality score is schema, load times, you know, and, and how it's structured. Um, but I think they, I, I don't know if, like, I believe that the customer says, I'm not seeing the conversions. And you say, let me look into it. So you audit that website and you come back and say, well, it kind of needs, needs to be better, right? And it makes that sale easier. I don't know quality score is a part of that for sure. There's lots of tools, but I do believe the snapshot report basically does the same thing for you. Um, and you don't need to share the whole, the whole snapshot report with the customer, just the website review part. So that would be how I would do it. 
Uh, other than that, if you guys are really want us to do that. So in our back end, we have a reseller login and we have a customer login, meaning you can log in and see everything. What am I getting? What's the actual raw cost per click? What is going on? So we could put something like quality score in that view so that you can control it. Because what we don't want is you built the website and then Google's coming back saying, hey, that website's quality score is low. And now you have a different quagmire. So we'd rather you controlled the flow of that conversation, but we could look into that. In the interim, you can just call or ping us and we'll just tell you what the quality score is if you want. There we go. Then one last one here, and then I have some follow-up as well um, with Charmaine's question as well. But um, Isaac, I, Isaac, uh, oh gosh, hung, hung them. Um, he's asking, is this, is this package available in the UK? Yeah, we do need a little help, Isaac. Sometimes in the UK, you guys call them loos. We think they're toilets, right? As long as the website says it's a loo, we're good. But we've actually started to create uh, changing our back end so that we can say, oh, this is so what we call a service pack. So for a plumber, as an example. So we would say, oh, here are some UK learnings for words. And so we actually map your client to a UK service pack for plumbers, American service pack. Brilliant. But anytime you know, like you guys in the UK know more. In North America, we think that we speak English. You know, you guys think you invented English and that we speak some derivative of English. So you, we do need help from you when it comes to those kinds of things. Good call. Okay, well, that does it for um, the questions in here. Charmaine, I'm going to follow up with the email here. Um, I, have your, I have your email good to go. So I'll get back to you on that. Um, and then Kristen just had a comment in Chrome. You can organize your tabs, right click and add it to a group. Helps you keep different projects organized, which is something I do. It's incredibly valuable. <laughs> but any uh, last questions, comments, concerns for Scott as we part ways here on a beautiful Friday after morning, I guess, or afternoon, wherever we are. And don't worry, Brett, I'm sending nice weather over to you in two days. You know what? I uh, that you can honestly, if you have some nice weather, you can keep it. I I love winter. I have such a positive attribution to winter. <laughs> I I actually really enjoy the cold and the snow. It's always meant like hockey and good vibes for me. So I'm not having a bad time at all. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not sending you balmy weather. I'm sending you, <laughs> you know, like minus one, minus two. <laughs> yeah, minus one, minus two. We could do that for sure. Jeez. Thank you for your time and the presentation. Um, Absolutely. I'm going to toss a Scott's email in here. Um, uh, you can contact him through that email or for the link in um, the marketplace, I believe. Is it? Yeah. We, Direct link in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, but, that, but that's Scott's email. And, and, you and, any... and you need to decide like Christina, like Christina, our support person deals with you guys. Like we deal with about 500 of you currently. And uh, she deals with you. So when it comes to how to's, I'm the wrong guy, unless you're asking how to approach a customer or how to train a sales force or how to position the product, how to make it work. Sorry, <laughs> but I'll, I'll help you as much as I can. Perfect. Perfect. So I'll be all the time. He's so frequently fed by the tenacity, <laughs> the tenacity, the underlying, uh, High, very high quality character. Um, do you have any closing uh, comments, Scott? No. I, that's it. Uh, that's all. Yeah, I'm, I appreciate it. We have a few of these. There's some canned stuff you can get. And maybe in the future, when we launch this display product, we'll do some more of these. Wonderful. Well, uh, if that's everything, thank you guys all so very much for once again joining us for a community session here. I love the banter in the beginning and we're always learning some interesting things throughout. So Scott, thank you so much for the presentation today and the uh, large Q&A session. <laughs> it seems like you didn't even breathe through all that. So kudos. Um, yeah, thanks for the session, you guys. And I hope you all have a wonderful, safe, healthy weekend. Cheers. Take care. Thanks, Brett. You're very welcome.